everybody. Welcome to week three of our audio teaching from the online Bible study, Mom Set Free. Um, if you've been here for the first two um, teachings, I know you are very eager to hear today's teaching about getting free from our weaknesses. And Jeannie Cunyon is back again with another great message to share with us. So, hey, Jeannie, welcome back. Hey, guys. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm excited about the topic today. All right. Well, I'm excited to hear again. Um, just it looks like we're going to be talking about Paul again. I'm excited about that. We we talked about Paul in week one, and um, just really to I have a few of these weaknesses, and I can't wait to get honest about them. So thank you for being back with us this week, and I'm going to go ahead and let you get started. All right. So today we're talking about our freedom to be honest about our weaknesses. And I can tell you, I can remember so clearly the first time I heard the expression, be the person you want your children to become. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, okay. So be the person you want your children to become. Uh, I had two children at the time. They were four and two. My third was on the way and I was a mess. The wheels weren't coming off. They were off. I was overwhelmed. I was discouraged. I was disappointed in who I'd become because my weaknesses and my shortcomings were all being revealed and magnified through motherhood. So you can imagine the pressure and the despair I felt when I read an article urging me to be the person I wanted my children to become. But here's the thing. It's because I thought that being the person I wanted my children to become meant being perfect. I thought God was relying on me to be a perfect example for my kids to follow. His grace was lost on me. It's why I guzzle his grace now. It's Mm. why I'm so grateful for his grace now because it does change everything. So here's the truth that set me free from that pressure. Our children don't need us to be the perfection of Christ. They do not need us to be the perfection of Christ. They need to see us in pursuit of Christ. Mm, They need us to point them to Christ. And they need to see the power of Christ made perfect in our weakness. That's what our children need. We see this so beautifully demonstrated in Paul's own life in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. This is a well-known passage. If you've listened to it before, I know I tend to kind of tune out if it's a familiar passage and I've heard it taught before or at least often, but stay with me because I think we might discover something new today. We find Paul begging God to to remove an affliction in his life. We know that. It's an affliction that revealed weakness. Paul said three different times, I begged the Lord to take this affliction away. And each time the Lord responded by saying, Paul, my grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. And so Paul responds, so now I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and the insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, I am strong. See how God, rather than responding to Paul's pleading to remove the affliction, notice what God did. He said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. Now, I want us to sit with that for a moment. We'll get to how Paul responded in a second. But first, let's put ourselves in Paul's shoes and think about how we would respond to God's answer. When God says, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. How would we respond? See, I'm pretty confident I would have said something along the lines of, hey, God, thank you for your grace. I appreciate that so much. I really do. But I don't think you heard me right. I don't want affliction. I don't like feeling weak. I want to be awesome. I want to be strong. I want to be self-sufficient and perfect for my kids. But then it hits me. I guess what I'm saying is, Lord, I don't want to need you. I don't want to have to rely on your power. I want to be able to do this on my own. I don't know if you can relate to that, but I think there's something here that we often miss when I'm packing this packet, this passage. Maybe, just maybe, the affliction that God allowed to remain was intended to keep Paul humble. Could it be that God loved Paul enough to allow the affliction for, to protect him from pride? 
to allow him to experience God's grace in profound ways that he never would have experienced otherwise. Maybe the affliction was meant to keep Paul reliant on God to provide everything he would need. And if that's if that's the case, if that's true, then just like the Apostle Paul, we can also boldly respond by saying, I can be glad to boast about my weaknesses. I can be glad to be honest with my kids about my weakness so that the divine power of Christ can work through me. Because when I confess I am weak, God is strong. See, our weaknesses, they do several things in our parenting. And I think, I know I certainly miss this. So here's three things that our weaknesses can do. The first one is they help us parent from a posture of humility. I want to be a mom who parents from a posture of humility. The second thing our weaknesses can do is they keep us reliant on God to provide everything we need to parent the children he's entrusted to us. And then finally, our weaknesses allow us, this is so good, they allow us to experience for ourselves and to demonstrate to our kids God's sustaining grace. See, of course, I'm not suggesting that the example we set for our kids does not have a profound impact on them. It does. We should absolutely seek to be godly examples for our kids. Our children need to see us growing in the likeness of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within us. See, we set an example, not by relying on our own power, but on the power of the Holy Spirit that is made perfect in our weakness. So in light of this, then I then I say, okay, well, I can actually get okay, maybe even excited about the expression, be the person you want them to become. Because I want to be somebody who my children see as reliant on God, somebody who's grateful for his grace, somebody who parents from a posture of humility, independence on God. So now I can be excited to be the person I want them to become because it's not about being perfect. As moms, we are to be an example to our children, but not an example of unachievable perfection. Our children can't handle that pressure. Instead, we strive to point them toward the one who is perfect for us as we follow his lead and rely on his spirit. Our goal does not need to be perfection, but letting our children see us enjoying him and glorifying him as we live the free and abundant life Christ came to give us. I just want to encourage you today, friend. You do not have to be ashamed of your weaknesses and your need. You are free to be honest about your need for Jesus with your children. Jesus loves to meet you and equip you and strengthen you and glorify himself through you in that place of weakness and need. There is only one who has ever been a perfect example for our children to follow. And that one isn't me and that one isn't you. It's Jesus. So we are free to be honest about our weaknesses. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. It is, it's, to be free, not to be ashamed. It's really mm-hmm. good for our kids to see we need Jesus, right? That's right. That's right. And it frees them to be honest yes. about their weaknesses, right? right? I mean, they are also under so much pressure to pretend they're pulling it off, right? right? And, and they can't carry that pressure. So when when we're willing to go first, when we're willing to say, I need Jesus, I have weakness, it's part of being human. Right. But watch how he shows up and meets us and equips us in that place. That that helps us raise kids set free. Right now we're mom set free, raising kids, kids set, set free, free to be honest about their yes. weakness. Right. Well, I liked one of the things where, you know, when you said our weaknesses allow us to experience for ourselves and demonstrate to our kids his sustaining grace. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned earlier in your teaching that you just guzzle his grace. And so I want to tell everybody, what does that mean? How, how do I just guzzle his grace? Just know that you are, it's that, it's that, it's that mindset of knowing I am covered in the righteousness of my King Jesus. 
on my worst day as a mom, God still delights in me and loves me as his daughter. And on my best day as a mom, God still loves me and delights in me and his daughter. He is not more proud of me on my better parenting days than he is on my bad parenting days because I am covered in the perfection and the righteousness of King Jesus. That is grace. I am free. I am free as a mom um, to walk in the assurance that I am um, God's beloved daughter, Mm -hmm. free from earning his pleasure by my performance as a parent. And that I am free to demonstrate that to my kids. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I was trying to hold myself together when I, what I really wanted to do is just throw my hands up in the air with everything you just said and said, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, yes. my goodness. And that is something that we can definitely just celebrate. Um, oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jeannie, for another great teaching. Um, and everybody, thank you for joining us. Um, we just will be praying for you as you do your best to live out this message. But hey, remember, you have those weaknesses and you can be honest about them and know that God is right there with you the whole time. And He's He is showing you how um, it's important for your kids to see the power of Christ being made perfect in our weaknesses. That's another way they're going to know that He's there for them no matter what, just like He's there for us. All right, everybody, have a great week. We will see you next week when we are going to be hearing about the freedom from creating a thriving faith. And I don't know about you, but I sometimes I'm so hopeful that my kids will will get the faith that I have. And I wonder, do I believe enough? Is my faith enough? And so I'm really excited to hear what you have to share with us next week, Jeannie. Awesome. All right, everybody, have a great week. And remember... Know the truth, live the truth, because it really changes everything in our lives. Mm -hmm.